Hey everyone and welcome to the Oakwoods YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we are gonna make a bag with no sewing machine. That's right, this is a no sew bag. Today, we're gonna make the no sew clutch and this pattern comes to us from Country Cow Designs. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Right off the bat, you're like, what? <laughs> Why would we not sew it? Because you don't need to. This is a rivet bag. So these bags are put together with firm material and rivets and they are designed in almost like a puzzle type of manner so that everything just works really well together. I love this idea so much. I especially love this idea if you just got a rivet press. So you see I have my rivet press over here behind me. If you just got one of those and you're waiting to test it out but you spent hours and hours sewing together a bag and now you're about to add some rivets to it and you're kind of nervous that what if I don't do it right? What if I mess it all up and I can't get it out or have to cut it out or something like that? This is a great pattern to play around with your rivet press. So I have lots and lots of ideas for this, but let's first just go over the design. So as you can see, I made mine the crossbody version. You could also make this a clutch. You can see on the back, we do have D ring tabs here. This is all one piece of material. The bag is all one piece of material, which is pretty crazy. On the front, I don't know if you guys can see because it's so shiny, but you can see we have like the crossover detailing with three rivets holding it together. There's this really fun like hole detailing as well. This is just something so you can kind of play around with your hole punch, get to know it a little bit better, but it offers a really pretty design. And there's two options. This is like the swirly whirly design. There's also like a straight more kind of angular design. I'm only doing the swirly whirly because I'm a swirly whirly kind of girly. <laughs> To open the bag, you're gonna lift up this flap here and you can see for this one, I am using a leather and then it's just open on the inside. So you see this is like a little flap here that holds the flap down and then you just have the inside nice and sturdy, nice and adorable. The bottom of the pattern slides through these back notches here to create the D-ring connectors, which I think is just so clever. And then you have the option to make a crossbody strap or you can make just a little wristlet strap. I love a crossbody strap. And then I added a couple little details to the end of this. I'm going to show you how I do that in the tutorial today. Okay, so here's the thing. This is made for leather. This pattern is made for leather. Really good, firm, beautiful leather. You can edge coat the edges. I did that on this one. I edge coated it and made it look really nice. That's the intention of the pattern. But I want to play around with it a little bit. Okay, I want to play around with it. So in today's tutorial, we're going to use clear vinyl, but we're going to use a good heavyweight clear vinyl. I'll have a link for it down below where I get it from, um, and I'll try to put some gauge options down there. But the thicker the clear vinyl, the better. You don't want any clear vinyl here if you're going to be doing it this way. That's loosey-goosey. Nothing floppy. That TPU vinyl that's really pretty with all the prints on it, that's not going to be good for this pattern. You're going to want something that's like strong, nice and heavy duty. We're not sewing it. Remember that. There's no sewing, so you don't have to worry if your machine is going to be okay with that clear vinyl. We don't care. We just care about the rivets, and the rivets will be fine. So if you're new to the Oakler's YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shoutouts, anything at all, leave them down below. There is another bag that Country Cow has that I saw. They might have multiple ones, but there's one other one I saw that is actually like a crossbody no-sew bag, and it's a good size. Like. It's really, really cute. So if you guys like this, we can do the crossbody one as well. I think that would be a lot of fun. And if our like clear vinyl idea works, I mean, we should try that one too with the clear vinyl. We'll see. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so since there's so few pieces to this pattern, we're just gonna dive right in and just go over all the pieces. So first and foremost, you're gonna need your material for the bag. Now this pattern is designed to be made with leather. That's the whole point of it. The pattern discusses different thicknesses of leather, different weights of leather, what kind of leather you should be using. And it's beautiful in leather, it really is. However, my take on this was kind of playing around with a rivet press for the first time, especially if you know you just got a rivet press and you wanna try it out. And I know a lot of us who work with domestic sewing machines don't use leather because it can be difficult, you know? Domestic sewing machines don't always like leather. So I decided we're gonna try to make it with clear vinyl. Now this is, I've already cut it out. You see, this is my pattern piece here. Here's the clear vinyl side. It has a paper backing on the back. Now this clear vinyl specifically, this is from By Annie, and it is a little bit firmer, a little bit thicker. And so I think it's gonna work really well with this bag. You don't want anything too loosey goosey, like a TPU clear vinyl that's really drapey and kind of stretchy and loosey. I don't think that's gonna work well for this. However, 
you can layer up your clear vinyl if you want to. That's something I'm gonna try later off camera. I'm gonna try to do, I'll just show you real quick. So once I'm done making this one off camera tonight, I'm gonna try to layer some of this clear TPU vinyl over my jelly vinyl. And I'm gonna cut both of them out using this pattern piece. And I am gonna sew around the outer edges of these two to hold them together. And then I'm gonna construct the bag with just these two. So I'll show you at the end of this video how that came together. So if you wanna use leather, leather's a great option. You can edge coat it. That's what I did on the first one. I used leather, edge coated it. It was beautiful. It takes time. However, if you just kinda of wanna dive in and you don't have leather but you have clear vinyl, I think that might be another option. I mean, that's what we're testing out today, right? Besides that, you're gonna need nine rivets. Now I have some of these little specialty mouse rivets, which I think I'm gonna to try to use. I think I'm gonna use about three of those and then I'll use six of just these regular rivets. Depending on the thickness of your material, you might need a longer post. I'm using these medium rivets. So they're nine millimeter by eight millimeter rivets from Emily Bags. However, if you have very thick leather, you will have quite a few layers here. So you might wanna get the large ones, which just has a longer post. Next for your crossbody strap, if you're doing a crossbody strap, you're going to need a one inch slider and two one inch swivel hooks. So these are just like fun, like O shaped swivel hooks. And then to go with that, I have my webbing. The pattern calls for 75 inches of one inch wide webbing. So you could make a strap and a wristlet. I'm just gonna be making the strap today. So I use about 56 inches of webbing for that, but that's just personal preference. And then I have two three quarter inch D-rings. And that is important because right down here, these are your D-ring straps. So it, if you use a one inch one, it's going to be a little too big for that. And then to go with this, I use this cute little template from Carolina Little Stitches to do a little strap end. It's one inch wide. And then you just trace these little ovals out. And then on the strap, when we make our crossbody strap, we really just wrap it around the end and rivet it on. And that's it. <laughs> you can glue it on, you can sew it on if you want. I just rivet it on and it's adorable. So not a lot of other stuff today because we're not sewing this, we're just riveting it. So obviously you need a rivet press. This is my favorite rivet press. It's from Cam Snaps. It's pretty, it works really, really well. There are so many die options to do whatever you want. I have a whole video going over how much I love this rivet press and my favorite die sets. Um, so if you wanna go check it out, go ahead and do that. There's also an Oakla Roots bundle. So you actually get the rivet press and all the dies and everything that I talk about in that video for a discounted price. So. If it's something you're looking at investing in, uh, go take a look. It's I love it, it's my favorite. And then I have a great hole puncher here. Now this is, this is kind of a fancy hole punch, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it's the best one out there. It really is. I have gone through so many hole punch, leather punch, things like this. And after a while, they just start to wear down and they don't punch all the way. I have had this for years and it works phenomenally. So it's worth the investment in my opinion because you're never gonna have to replace it. So I'll have a link for that as well. Obviously I have the die sets that are gonna go with the rivets I'm using today. If you're using any sort of fancy rivets, like shaped rivets like I am, or gem jewel rivets, things like that, uh, make sure you have the right die set for it. Because if I were to use this regular rivet die set with those mouse shaped rivets, they will break. So you have to make sure you pay attention. Those mouse shaped rivets are also from Cam Snaps and they have a special die that comes with them. Next, I have my Beacon 3-in-1 glue. I like to use this for those little strap-ins. Honestly, that's it. That's the only reason I use it. Then I like to have a selection of marking tools. I have an air racing marker and just a black pen and then a silver ink pen. Uh, it just depends on what I'm working on. A lot of times I can mark the dots for all the rivet hole punches with a black pen. It's easy to see and I literally punch out that dot so I don't worry about it in the end. Um, but if you have some marking you need to do and you need to make sure you can take it off later, the air racing marker and silver ink pen are great for that. I have my stiletto. My stiletto is really used to poke the holes in the pattern piece. Uh, that's what I use it for. And then I have an X-Acto knife. Now any X-Acto knife will do. This is just something I was able to find in my closet. Uh, but the X-Acto knife is gonna be really helpful, especially at cutting out those little ovals that are gonna be for the slits so that the D-ring tabs can go through to the back of the bag. All right, so I'm just gonna make the crossbody strap for this bag, not the wristlet. However, the wristlet in the pattern is very cute. So I do wanna try that method at some point. Uh, so I just have a 56 inch long piece of my webbing. This is one inch wide. And then I have my two little webbing end pieces. This is totally optional. This, this is not a pattern piece that's part of the pattern. You don't need to do this, but it is fun. It's cute. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little template here and I'm gonna place it over the back of my pattern piece. And I'm gonna grab a marking tool and I'm just gonna mark placement for where I want my rivets. Now I'm just gonna do one rivet and I'm gonna do it on the very outer circle for each end, just like that. 
So I'm going to place this mark on both of them. I'm going to grab my hole punch and I'm just going to punch out the holes where those dots are. And now I'm going to grab some of my glue and I'm just going to add glue to the back side of each one of these little end covers here. And I have that glue on there. Now I'm going to take my little template here and I'm going to line it up with the very edge of my webbing and the middle, there's like a middle line on that template. I'm going to line that up with the end of the webbing and then I'm going to mark that same spot on my webbing. So it's the third hole closest to the rounded edge and then I'm going to punch that out of my webbing and then I'm going to take one of my end tabs here with the glue on it and I'm going to line it up so that the hole is on the same. So on the back here, I can see the hole. It's on the back side and then I wrap this around the hole on the front side. It comes to match. So I should be able to see right through the three holes, the hole on the front, the hole in the webbing, and the hole on the back. And then if you want to grab a clip or something to just hold this down while that glue drives, you can do that. So I'm just going to repeat that on the other end of my webbing. Okay, once that glue is dry, we're going to start with one end over here, and then we're going to take our slider and we're going to thread the end of our strap up and over that middle bar of the slider. So going from the bottom over and then just pull it so that it overhangs pretty much as much as your accent. So it doesn't need to overhang a ton. It doesn't have to be super, super tight around that middle bar, just enough so that, you know, the accent still looks nice and you can see everything. Okay, so I already have that hole punched through the end of my webbing, but I'm gonna use that hole as guidance while I take my hole punch. I'm just gonna line it up with the hole I've already punched, and this is going to help me punch through the other end of the webbing. So now I have four layers here. I have two layers of my vinyl for the strap end cover, and then I have two layers of webbing, and then I'm gonna grab a rivet, and I'm gonna push a rivet through all those holes and then I'll grab the cap and just snap it on the other side. And how cute is that? Isn't that just a sweet, it's super simple little accent. So now with my webbing, fold over side up, move stuff out of the way. I'm going to keep my webbing nice and straight while I go to the other end over here. And then I'm going to thread on one of my swivel hooks so the swivel is facing down. So down towards the table. Thread that on just like that. And then again, keeping your webbing as straight as possible, you're going to fold the webbing in half, bringing the unattached end to the fold over side here, up through the bottom of that swivel hook, over the middle bar, and down through the other side. And you notice I have not set the rivet that I put in by the slider here. I'm going to set them both at the same time, just in case I make a mistake. That way I can pull it apart and redo it. So this is what your shop should look like now. You have your swivel hook attached over here, the slider in the middle, and then on the other end, nothing, except for this adorable little strap end. So then we're gonna grab the remaining swivel hook and with swivel side up this time, so facing up towards me, I'm just gonna slide it on, and I'm gonna fold over the end of the webbing around that bar, just like I did with the middle one. And again, overhang it enough. I mean, that's, that's how much, enough. Not too much, not too loosey-goosey, just enough. Eyeball it. Does it look good to you? If it does, then that's right. That's the right amount. So once again, using the holes I already made, I'm going to punch through them all again. And I'm going to punch through the webbing. And then I can just insert my rivet. And then snap it on the back. Okay, so now once I take a look at my strap and it all looks good, now I'm going to set it. And this is the easiest thing ever. So I have my rivet press here and I have the die set for this size rivet. Now here's the thing. This is a die set, I believe, for a 10 millimeter wide rivet and my rivet is 9 millimeters right, wide. So that's the, that's the distance from point to point on the top of my rivet here, across it, the diameter. Um, that's okay. As long as your die set isn't smaller, that's fine. A little bit bigger is totally fine. 10 millimeters and nine millimeters are not a very big difference. So I'm going to just insert this into my die set and I'm going to press it down. And it takes very little effort and now I have it attached. There you go, no sewing necessary. So I'm going to pull away the webbing from the rivet by the slider and I'm going to just press this as well. And there we go. Adorable, easy, simple crossbody strap.
Okay, so now let's work on this guy. So you're gonna see a lot of dots on here. First and foremost, any of these little tiny circles, little tiny circles on the ends, you gotta punch those out. So when I'm prepping my pattern piece, I just grab a stiletto and I just stick a stiletto through the center of each one of those circles. Those are necessary no matter what design you want. You gotta have those. Those are gonna be where we put rivets. The rest of all these little shapes here, no rivets are going there. That's just for decoration. And it's a really cool decoration. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Honestly, with the clear vinyl, I probably don't need to do it at all. But I'm going to, because <laughs> it is pretty. Uh, but it is definitely far more noticeable on leather. I don't think this is gonna be noticeable on the clear vinyl, but let's see. So you either have triangles or you have squares. Pick one shape and punch out the holes of the center of those. I'm doing the triangles because I like this kind of circular look that goes back and forth on the sides. It's like little like wisps of air. I think that's really pretty. Um, if you want more of like a structured, you know, straight look, then do the squares. And then you need to cut out these little oval slits right here. So be very careful as you cut those out. Once you have all of your holes poked through and all your cutouts done on your template, you're gonna lay this over your material. Now, you can lay it over the wrong side or you can lay it over the right side, whatever is easiest for you. And then what I like to do is I like to take like a black pen, something I can see really easy, and you're going to transfer those marks all over your material. So all of the rivet place marks, you're gonna transfer those. All of the decorative punches, you're gonna transfer those. These little oval, slits here, you're going to transfer those. All of it has to be transferred. Now, I'm using Claire Vinyl, and Claire Vinyl is really difficult to transfer these marks to because it'll come off right away. If you notice, this is the Claire Vinyl side here, and I did not transfer those marks. This Claire Vinyl from Biani comes with a backer paper, and the backer paper is pretty thick. It's not super lightweight, like tissue paper or anything like that, and it sticks to the vinyl really, really well. So until the very last minute, I'm keeping that paper on here. So I marked all of my stuff on the paper, not on the actual clear vinyl. Now when I do the next one where I'm using two layers, one layer of jelly, one layer of clear vinyl, that's not gonna be an option. I'm gonna have to mark it on the vinyl. Just make sure you have the right tools for that, okay? Uh, like I said, clear vinyl pen marks can smudge really easy, and so you're gonna wanna be gentle while you do that. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a small cutting mat and then my X-Acto knife, because these little oval rectangles here are very difficult to cut out with scissors. So this is where I would suggest you use an X-Acto knife and just be very, just take your time here. Go nice and slow, because this is gonna be seen in the end. I mean, it's, it's noticeable, you know, so you don't want it to be sloppy. It's not something that's gonna be hidden later. So when I'm doing this, I gotta make sure I'm going through the paper and the clear vinyl. And if you need to go over it a couple times, that's perfectly fine, especially with leather. Leather can, can take a few, few tries. Now I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm gonna do the rest. And I think I'm gonna leave this pink thing out because it might be easier for you to see. So everywhere I have a dot, I don't know if you can see it on this white piece here, uh, I'm gonna punch a hole. Okay, so here's what the left side looks like when all the holes are punched. You see we have the rivet holes over here, the decorative holes. This right here is also for a rivet for the D-rings. And then this is going to be your D-ring connector down here. So I'm gonna repeat this with the other side. Okay, so this is where we're at now. We have all of our holes punched. Now, I don't really have an intention to put a bag tag on this. If you wanna sew a bag tag onto the flap, you definitely can. Uh, if you wanna sew it onto the back center here, you can. But I'm not planning on doing one today. Because again, I'm trying to keep it no sew. No sew. Maybe on the next one I will, but for this one it's no sew. So let's just go through with the paper on here how we put this whole thing together. You're gonna pull the bottom up like this, and these bottom tabs here are going to actually slide through those slits and then move towards the back, just like that. Then you'll have one panel come over, and then the other panel come over, and they're gonna to slide together. And this is just going to slip right underneath them after it's all constructed. So this is kind of a brief idea of how it's going to look, just like that. So if you have anything you wanna put somewhere, think about it now. The number one thing I want you to think about in this moment is these pieces right here. Because this center nub is going to slide between the top and bottom nubs, and all of these dots need to line up. And if you find that they're not lining up, make the adjustment now. And the reason that they might not line up is because maybe you just cut it a little bit too wide. If that's the case, so like for me, it does look like I have a bit of wrinkling here. If that's the case, you can grab your scissors 
and I like to do it on the two nub side. Just kind of gently shave down the insides, just a scotch, just a tiny bit. Don't lose the design. It won't look bad. Just make a tiny bit more room so that you can fit that center nub in between them. Now, if you're working with leather, this is something you want to do right off the bat because if you're edge coating it, you don't, you don't want to be cutting this after you've already edge coated it. So do this adjustment from the very beginning. Okay, so now all of my lines are gonna line up perfectly. I don't have any scrunching of my material. I think it's gonna be good. All right, now it's time to put it all together. So now I'm gonna grab my two D-rings and all my rivets. So I'm gonna save my mouse rivets for the front and I'm gonna use the regular rivets on the back. So now I'm gonna remove this paper from the back of my clear vinyl because I don't want the paper to be part of it in the end. Don't forget to remove the paper. All right, hopefully you guys can still see this. So we're gonna pull this up. I'm going to thread one of these little D-ring strap tabs through it, and then I'm gonna to flip to the back. I'm gonna take a D-ring, and I'm going to thread it over that tab, and I'm gonna fold the tab back. I'm gonna insert my rivet through the tab, and then through the hole on the back of my clutch. You can see it doesn't go through the front bottom piece here, so you're gonna to have to open it up a bit and then insert the cap, just like that. That looks cool. I know it's clear, guys, and I'm doing my best to make it noticeable, but that looks cool. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat on the other side. So again, flipping this over, taking the right side D-ring tab, sliding it through that slit, flipping over to the back, threading on the D-ring, grabbing a rivet, inserting the rivet through the tab, and then through the hole in the back panel, flipping it over and adding a cap to the inside. There we go. That is such a cute look. And I love that it's clear. I mean, you could take this to a stadium or something, or you could take it to a game. I wouldn't put a lot of heavy things in it, but it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I don't know, it's cool to me. Okay, so now I'm gonna set these rivets real quick. So I've got my rivet press still with that standard rivet die set on here. So I'm just going to insert these carefully, line them up the way I want, and press down. See? Nice and simple. This is cool. This is a cool one. I like it. Okay, so now my D-rings are installed, so now we got to do the little crisscross applesauce goes on the front. And those ones I'm going to use with these mouse rivets, which are a little tricky to work with. So we're going to, we're going to work on that together. First thing I want to remember is to change out my bottom die because this bottom die is a lot wider and flatter. And that's going to allow these little mouse heads to just sit in there like that. And when I press it, I don't have to worry about anything breaking. If I were to use this regular die set here, first of all, it's too small. And when I press it, the ears will fold up and break. It's happened. That's how I know it. That's how I know what happens. So I'm gonna put the other bottom die in here. The top die can stay the same or you can get a smaller top die because these are very small rivets. Um, I mean, I don't know if I have a small one. Let me see, this is a six millimeter rivet die set. Let me see if these will work. Oh yeah, six millimeter will probably work better. I think I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna change the top die to a six millimeter rivet one because it is smaller. And the reason I want to do that is because when the two pieces come together, if they're not lined up perfectly, they don't snap together like regular rivets do. And if they're not lined up perfectly, this top, this long one, this one with the stem, it can bend and squish over. And that's not what we're going for, especially with clear vinyl. Um, it's still very possible it will happen, but hopefully with a more correct die size, it won't happen, we'll see. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do this one at a time. I'm gonna have the center nub, the middle nub go over the middle like that and the two top and bottoms come down. I'm gonna take my decorative rivet here and I want the decorative rivet on the outside, just like that. So I'm gonna make sure that's where it's gonna be. I'm gonna place it face down on my die and then I'm going to thread the small rivet with the stem from the back 
through these top two pieces. So you can see we're not missing with this bottom fold over piece, nothing like that. We're only dealing with these top two pieces here. I have it threaded on and now I'm going to flip it down. Let's see if I can move the flap out of the way. And then I'm gonna insert it over my little mouse head. I'm gonna have to hold on to it while I line up the top die. And then I'm gonna carefully press it down. Oh, how cute is that? That's so cute, isn't it? Oh my gosh, here's the flap. That is so cute. Okay, so now let's do the next one. So the next one again, just make sure everything's lined up right. The middle nub is on top. The other piece is on the back. I'm gonna take my little mouse head and I'm gonna put it face down. And then the part of my rivet with the stem is gonna go from the back to the front just like that. I'm gonna flip this so that it is rivet side up and insert it into my die. And just take your time here, don't be in a hurry. There's no, this, this is a quick make, you don't need to be rushing through it. And then I'm just gonna press it down. There we go, oh it's so cute. I kinda like how they're both little cockeyed. I think that's fun. Let's see if we can do it with the bottom one. I have no control over which direction these little mousies are facing, but they are cute like that. All right, so last one. We're going to have the bottom nub over the top of the bottom. Insert our stem. Let's get our little mouse over here and then press it down. Of course, that one's more like centered. We can try to kind of rotate it. All right, <laughs> that's so stupid cute. And then you just take the flap and with the riveted part here, you lift that up, the flap goes over the bottom and look at that. <laughs> That is so stinking cute. It is totally clear. Here, let me grab my crossbody strap. Let's have a look at this. And yeah, I mixed my metals. I have like a pink D-ring and then rainbow hardware. I like mixing metals. That's my thing. I like it. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I do like it. And how stinking cute is that? I think that the clear vinyl actually worked really well for this. Like this is super cute. If you just needed to carry your cell phone and like a small like little wallet, or something like that, like just like a little tiny credit card wallet and just keep it in here because you were going to a concert or a football game and everything has to be totally clear. Like, I feel like it would work. Okay, so that's like the fastest bag you've ever made, right? It's so fast. And so I'm trying to see if you guys can see. I, you know, I always think this, I'm like, clear vinyl is gonna be great. And then I forget, oh, I have to try to show it to you guys. But here it is. You can see I actually put some pins here. So we have those holes that we punched out for that detailing. The detailing isn't that noticeable on the clear vinyl, but it is a great option if you wanna put pins in it. So I have a couple, like a little star pin over here. I have this little book pin. And so we open it up. This actually works really well. So I'm gonna grab my phone. Here's my phone here. I'll put that in there. I'm just saying if you're going to a concert or a sporting event and you have to have a clear bag, this works great. Yes, it does not have a zipper on it. However, that flap is nice and big and oversized. It tucks in really well. So I don't think you need the zipper, honestly. And then let's just put it on real quick. Mine's a little long, but you see like this works great as a clear bag. I think this would be especially great for like teenagers young adults, college students, people like that who like don't have a ton to carry um, when they go to the concert. You know, they're not mom. They don't have to carry everything for everybody. Um, I think this is great. I would definitely use this for a concert. This is adorable. Okay, so I mentioned this idea and I did give it a try and oh my gosh, you guys, you can have so much fun with this pattern. This is actually two layers of clear vinyl. So I have a layer of jelly vinyl and then I have a layer of that TPU clear vinyl. Now TPU clear vinyl is kind of loosey goosey. I wouldn't suggest just using it. But when you layer it up with something else like this jelly vinyl, I did sew them together. So I did take both of these, cut them out using the pattern piece and then sewed along the edges. So they are sewn together right along the edges. And then, because I wasn't so sure about cutting out those detailings with the holes, you know, um, with two pieces, what I did was I skipped, let me see if you guys can see. I skipped every other hole and instead of just a hole, I added a grommet and that gives it a whole new look, which I think is so stinking cute. So you can have a ton of fun with this. If you have specialty rivets or specialty grommets, you can use them here. If you wanna layer up, I love layering up clear vinyl with jelly vinyl. I think that look is just so cool. This is a perfect, perfect summer bag. I mean, 
Look at this, this is like the easiest thing ever to keep clean. This would also actually be really great in diaper bags to put like wet wipes, things like that. Things that are gonna be kind of messy, but you can just slide it in. You don't have to use the strap all the time. You can just take that off, slide this clutch in, easy peasy. I love it so stinking much, and I especially love the clear one and adding pins. I keep finding these little pins, and I'm just like adding them to all the little holes, which is such a cute little detail. Again, what a fun like little clear bag for a concert or a sport of, sports event or something like that. Like, I don't know. I, I This is one of those patterns where you can really play around with stuff. So if you just got a rivet press, if you're brand new to riveting and things like that, I would highly suggest you make this bag and play around with the stuff you got. So if you got some, you know, you get a rivet press and you're like, you got some rivets. Oh, they have like shiny jeweled ones or they have funny shaped ones or they have these beautiful grommets. You got like a plethora of things and you're like, I don't really know how to use any of this stuff or what to do with it. Like this is the pattern to try that out on. So I hope you loved not sewing with me today. If you just got a brand new rivet press, let me know how you're liking it. I hope you are loving it. If you haven't seen over at Cam Snaps, they do actually have like, <laughs> pointing it back over here, that pink one. It's like a bundle. It's the Oakle Roots rivet press bundle with all kinds of dyes and accessories and things like that for a discounted price. So if you're interested in it, I'll have a link down below. I love my rivet press more than, I mean, I if I had to choose between my rivet press and my sewing machine, I have, I don't know. I really love my rivet press like a lot. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.